John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. <clears throat> John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Bahashim, Kahakwadash. Double honor to the elders and apostles, the great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutation to the hope of elect. Shalom. Now, the inspiration for this video comes to me on behalf of. Uh, several days ago, uh, I was in a store in my um, community, and um, I had on a, uh, I was, it was lucky, I was wearing a shirt that said Lion of Judah on the front with a, um, a picture of a male lion with its mane on it, and as I was going to, as I was lining, getting into the line to be checked out at the store, um, a young lady, uh, I would say a Judite woman, okay, um, said that she was from the area and she had been in the, she had been awakened uh, for about two years now and um, her and I began to converse a little bit, not a lot, not a lot, but um you know, just trying to, you know, not really, you know, just just small talk conversation, so to speak. And um, so she asked me, she asked me, uh, who does, who do I follow? And I told her that I, um, I follow Great Millstone. And um, then I pulled up my channel, okay, on my, uh, I told her I had, I had my own channel, whatnot, and um, uh, and uh, I pulled up my channel. And uh, she said she was going to screenshot it. And uh, she's going to check my channel out. Okay, whatnot. But, you know, and from that point. So then I asked her, I said, uh, I said, who does she follow? She told me Sakari. Okay, and I said, uh, she said, you don't like Sakari? I said, well, I've gotten into a few rebuttals with Sakari from time to time in times past. And she said, she said, but you don't like Sakari? I said, well, it's not so much that I don't like him, um, but it's more so the fact that he doesn't believe that Paul um, wrote the books of the New Testament that he wrote. And she and we began to talk about some other things, and she was confused on that. You know, so the Bible says that the only unpardonable sin is the only, only unpardonable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So, what, well, in, in, in layman term, what that means is if you believe something contrary to the doctrine of Yahweh Shemir Rashad, then you will not be pardoned, okay? In other words, you will not be saved, okay? <laughs> for, for people who are having a hard time with that word. Now, so uh, uh, he doesn't believe in that Paul wrote the uh the the books that he wrote in the Greek Testament. So but then she began to ask me, she began to ask me, she said, Where your friends is at? And I said, What friends is <laughs> I said, What friends? She said, You ain't got no friends on your clothes. I said, What? I said, My goodness, I hear brothers in Great Millstone don't speak of this all the time. I have never seen it myself. I've never experienced it myself. But uh, they won't tell me a lie, so obviously it is happening in the earth somewhere. But anyways, um, so I told her, I began to tell her, I said, our friend is, I began to, uh, I began to uh, 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 let her know that um, uh, the only time I wear fringes is when I am teaching. Okay, if I'm street teaching or, or um, you know, whatnot. Then I'm following Numbers 15, 38. You know, have the children of Israel. Uh, so, friends at the bottom of their gardens to remind them of the law. Okay, to remind them of the laws of Yahweh, Shem, and have them put a blue ribbon 
um, have them sew a blue, a ribbon of blue, I believe it says, a ribbon of blue at the corners, the ends of your garment. So, you know what not. So, um, but she said, no, you're supposed to have them friends on. You're supposed to have them friends on. I start, and I thought that's how, I thought that's how, I thought that's how we, we, we have friends as well. But I, <laughs> I, I didn't do that. But anyway, what it is, is the timing in the uh, grocery store. Um, we were in the store. It was just a, just her and I in that space. Okay. And, um, and just speaking, we weren't speaking loud. So it was kind of, you know, private, private type conversation. But it wasn't long before she was heading out of the store. And, um, I think she, she had to go pick up her kids or something like that or whatever the case is. So, um, but she screenshot my channel and whatnot. So, um, I don't know if she's subscribing now. I didn't keep up with the numbers at the time. But anyway, um, so I wanted to do a lesson about these fringes, okay? And it's going to be a very quick lesson. I know I say that all too often and it don't end up usually being all that quick. But um, I only have about five or six presets already. So um, I intend for it to be a quick lesson. Uh, right now uh, in my area, it just, we just had a, we just had like a three, four hour pour down in rain. And right now we have, a clearing, if you will. It's not raining right now, but the rain's supposed to return in another two hours. So I want to get a couple of videos done and post it, upload it, uh, and get on up out of here and go into the grocery store and come back before the rain falls down. So anyway, so I, again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, and Rishai, Bahashem, and Kahakudash. Yahweh is the name of our Father, our Creator in ancient Hebrew. Yah means He is Hawa means he to be he exists Yahweh Shai is the name of our Lord and Savior in ancient Hebrew Yah means he is Yahweh means he is our salvation our deliverer in ancient Hebrew okay so without further ado I'm just going to get right to it here now as you can see here our opening precepts was John chapter 4 verse 24 right now let's go back to that once again let's go back to those two precepts and um, we're gonna jump, and then we're gonna jump right into uh, Numbers fifteen thirty-eight, where she said, where she saw, where, where in what what the Judite woman was speaking of, in the checkout line. Okay, John six sixty-three. It is the spirit that quickeneth; the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, what I like to do is get that in the blue there, right quick. Let's go to, uh, let's go back to John 4.24. Is that right? No, nope, that's not right. John 4.24. Oh, my goodness. What's going on today? 4. 4. It's <coughs> lucky. Yeah. Okay, now, John chapter 4, verse 24. Okay, let's get there. Okay. It says right there, God is a the spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay. Now, we're worshiping on behalf of the Holy Spirit, the Rakakodash, which is the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth has established the word, pursuant to John chapter 1, right? So, the, yeah, so he has established the word, okay? And the word was made flesh, John chapter 1, verse 14, right? Okay, so we are worshiping him in spirit according to the spirit. Remember, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Let's get that right quick. 2 Timothy 3, 16. Gee. One day my glasses will get here in this mailbox, and I will be able to see a little better. I think that's right now. Second Timothy, three sixteen. Let's move this bubble down. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine. 
for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, what that scripture means, in fact, let's get in the NLT, and I might not have to explain it because it will it will be self-explanatory. All scripture is given, Slaki, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. See? It connects us when we are wrong. Slaki, that's incorrect. Let's start that again. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. It needs no explanation, okay? So when, when John 6.63 says, uh, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The word quickening means to change, okay? So that's your inner man. So what you thought was right and what you have been taught all your life and what the people had told you, and what and what and what Reverend Deacon Doctor Doctor Reverend Doctor Bishop and all these other folk, what they've been explaining to you in their deep, 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 deep uh, seminary theological affair, <laughs> okay? <laughs> at, at at the conference, I think anybody who's in me know 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 about that word conference. At the conference or whatnot, then you now can understand that they are incorrect, and because the Holy Spirit is going to help you understand. What is correct, okay? All right, now, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true according to the knowledge of the truth, right? Right? John 14, 6, John 17, 17, sanctify them with thy truth, my thy word is thy truth. Okay, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true, and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives, it corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. I can't, I can't break that down any further, okay? All right, now, so John 6.63 says what? Let's go back to it right quick, and then we can get on with our lesson because it is important to note these few precepts up front, okay? We're going to tie that all back in with the entire lesson. And, um... You, it will be easily, more easily understood. Those of us who are having a problem. John four twenty four. God is a spirit. Let's pull it up a little bit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay? And we know that the truth is who? Yahweh Shai. We know that John chapter 1 verse 14 tells us, that the word was made flesh, and we beheld his glory. Beheld means to look at. So we looked at, we know that his glory, and that he was who he was to be, the son of Yahweh Shem Shai. Okay? And how do we know that? Because he came and he fulfilled those prophecies that were stated that he, that he would do. He, he performed the miracles that they said he would do. Okay? So now, let's continue on. Let's get back to John 6, 6 to 3, because what I'd like to do is study how the word quickness. Um, I've told you what it was, but 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 says, Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, so we're going to prove it. And it's not a really all that big of a deal. But um, I try to teach you, I try to prove to you and show, show to you the way to accurate to study a word, uh, because that's how... The prophets of great millstone taught me, okay? Now, and it says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit nothing, the words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. Isn't that the same thing that you saw back then, John chapter 4, verse 24? Spirit and life. Spirit and life. Spirit and life. Okay, now, let's, let's check on, let's click on that I precept there. <coughs> Excuse me, Salaki. Now, let's go here. Now, Let's look up the word quickness. Okay, it comes to us from the Greek. Strong's G 2227. Zoa poieo. Zoa poieo. Okay, and zoa means what? To revitalize. To make alive. To give life. 
And notice, notice, notice in John 6, 63, their spirit, their life. Spirit and life, John 4, 24. Spirit and life. Now, okay, let's go here. To produce a life. Okay, to cause to live, to make a life, to give life. By spiritual power to rise and invigorate, to restore to life, to give increase of life, okay, of the spirit, quickness, quickening as respects the spirit endued with new and great powers of life, okay, so if you, if, we, if we're coming to life by way of Yahweh Hashem Mishai, by way of the Rakah HaKudah, spirit of truth, then we're going to come to life, we're going to do we're going to do what the Holy Spirit said that we will be able to do when this happens. If this thing is so. Okay. And when it happens, we'll be able to do what it says. We'll do just like the two-thirds of the house of Israel. The, these people, the Bible says, these people have a zeal for me, a love for me, a zeal for me. But they're denying the power. Why? Because they can't seem to do what Yahweh Shah says they will be able to do once that spirit come up on them. And then the Bible says you shall receive power once the spirit has come up on you. Okay, what are the powers? First Corinthians chapter 12. Those are the spiritual gifts of the Spirit. You know, we may not operate in them all, but those, all of them are of the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shah, right? You know, so now, so from time to time, I operate in nearly all of them at one time, you know, so, you know, but it's by the Spirit. It's of the Spirit, by the Spirit. Period. Now, nothing you can do on your own. Okay, now. Let's continue on. Uh, now, so, and as you can see there, of seeds quickened into life, germinating, springing up, and growing. Now, let's get that uh, in the NLT, and then we'll get on to our precepts, and we'll close the video out. Don't really want to stay on this long at all, but um, what she fails to realize in that when she talks about those fringes is those fringes, are not spirit and life. <laughs> They're not spirit and life. Those fringes are of the law, 100%, which is called, that law is going to, the, 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 the law, don't get me wrong now, the law is important, but the Bible says that if any of you break even the least of these commandments, you're guilty of them all. So according to the law itself, if we if we were still under the law 100% and not under faith in Yahweh Shai, okay, if we were still under the law 100%, let me tell you what would end up happening. There wouldn't be no remnant. Ain't nobody to be saved. Nobody. Why? Because the entire nation of Israel went into slavery, all right? Why? As a punishment because we would not keep the law, okay, all right? But not only that, because we served other gods. One of the first laws of the, of, the, of the Ten Commandments, in fact, I believe it is the first law of Exodus chapter 20, is thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Well, we already in the damn hole. But wasn't it prophesied that Yahweh Shem is coming back for a remnant? So there had to be a ransom. It had to be, it had to be a, a I hate to use a fail safe, that word, that fail safe. I, 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 hate, I hate to use that word. So, in fact, let me retract that word. Um, there had to be a way out. There had to be a bridge. There had to be a connector. There had to be because the children of Israel serving other gods, okay, not keeping the law, statutes, commandments, and orders of Yahweh Hashem and Shai in a damn hole. Yahweh Shai is coming back for his bride. It won't be no damn bride. How it going to be a bride? The whole bride in the hole. Right, so we we needed a bridge, a a, re, a reconciliator, if you will, and you can find that in John fourteen and six. Let's get there right quick. Um, we've already started that word, that precept, John chapter, and y'all have to forgive me for my labor breathing today. Um, I'm kind of you know rushed a little bit to get this video done, and I'm um, trying to get my room together. I know I'm getting ready to leave up right here and try to try to go to the grocery store. I don't know how successful it'll be. But, um, anyway, let's get it here now. We're at, uh, John 14, 6. Let's get there. Okay, now. I'm gonna pull this up. I'm gonna try to proceed on. I don't know why that continues to happen. Um, 
Bear with me for just a few seconds here. John 14 and 6. Okay, now, says what? Yahweh said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Two words that you find in what? John 4, 24. God is a spirit. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay, now, let's start again. Yahweh shall say unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, so like and no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Okay? All right, so he is the truth. He says, I am the truth. Right? So, God is a spirit. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, we must worship him and be imitators of our power, Yahweh Shai, but at the same time, under the inspiration and direction of the Holy Spirit, period, which all of our scriptures, which are all our laws, are written under the inspiration of who? God. And it's proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, see, in righteousness, right? And instruction, which is laws, right? Now, let's get on to where, we, where we're headed. Um, uh, Hopefully you're able to receive that by the spirit, power, and honor of Yahweh B'Shem Jai. Now, let's go here. <clears throat> let's bring up, and I'm, I'm really just going to run through these preachers. I'm not going to run through them, but I'm just going to bring them up to reduce the excess, uh, to reduce babbling, okay? Um, John 14, 15. Let's get it out. Oh, come on. Now, John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? Now, first of all, oh, I forgot. Let's, uh, it slipped my mind, it's locking. Let's pull up Numbers 15, 38 right quick so we can see the scripture in which the, uh, the, the Judite woman was speaking of. Numbers 15, 38 it is a commandment, okay? All right, it's a commandment. Now, <laughs> Come on, phone today. Today. Come on, tell you, boy, this, is, this place is. It's time for a new phone, I think. Let's go. Numbers 1538, speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Okay. Verse 39, and it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord power. Okay. Let's read that again. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord power and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you in which you used to go a horn. Okay? That's when we were serving other gods. When when it references the whoring. That's our fornication adultery, right? Spiritual. Adultery, spiritual uh, fornication, right? Now, um, actually, physical at that time. Okay, but now, let's continue on. <coughs> now, um, verse 40. That ye remember and do all my, com my commandments and be holy unto your God. <coughs> I am the Lord, thy power, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord, your God. Now, so... This was a, 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 a commandments, okay, that were given for the children of Israel, okay, to follow, okay. Now, which are laws, statutes, commandments, ordinances, and the like. Now, now the reason why I have said that, um, and we know again, John six sixty three, the flesh profit nothing, okay. All right, now, okay, and, and and we must worship Him in spirit and in truth, right? Watch this, Joshua. One and eight. And this is not, again. I'm not. I'm not trying to do a long list. I'm not trying to 
go deep into nothing. I just want to point out something right quick. Okay, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. We are commanded to meditate on the word day and night. If we're meditating on the word day and the night, it is, it, is, it, is, it is allowing us to do what, what Numbers 15, 38 tells us to do. Okay? Have the children either put fringes on their garments to remind them of the law. Okay? To, so that they can keep my commandments around them of the law and of my commandments and do them, right? Okay. Joshua 1 and 8. Listen to this. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Okay? Now. So, now, Numbers 15.38 in this precept is allowing us to visit the same things. Okay? All right. It's allowing us to visit the same things because Joshua 1 and 8 tells us to meditate on the word day and night. I meditate on the word day and night. I'm, I'm meditating on the word right now. I'm pulling these precepts. Okay, I'm pulling these precepts and I'm breaking the ones down that I need to break down to help you understand it greater, okay? Or more efficiently, shall I say. Now, okay, now, so I said I bring all that to the forefront let you know that by meditating on the word day and night, we are meditating upon his commandments. Okay. I mean, I know that every time we come up on a Sabbath day, I'm already meditating on the Sabbath. I'm already meditating on, on what I want to do on the Sabbath, how I want to do things, you know, as far as teaching, whatnot. Um, as far as what I need to do and get my thoughts in order and whatnot, you know, whatnot. And, and, and even before this, before, before, before we even get to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, my food is done. Okay, I've cooked enough food, especially when I have what I call two Sabbaths back to back. That's how I refer to it as when you have the last Sabbath in the month today, but then tomorrow is the new moon. Okay, that's two Sabbaths back to back. <laughs> that's how I refer to it. Okay, so I need to cook enough food. I mean, that doesn't really have a whole lot to do with it, but the Bible says that we are to not cook. Okay, we are to not buy or sell. We are to not cook now. We know we're in captivity, so we're not going to be able to keep these laws, you know, we, 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 all the way out, okay? Because the people around us is not keeping these laws. So they, you know, they and they don't believe what you believe, and they don't have the truth, and they don't have to understand the scripture. So they're not going to see things the way you see things, you know? So, I mean, you don't want to see a pink slip either, right? Right. So, I mean, you know, so now, so now let's continue on. Now. Luke 4 and 4 says, says to do what? <coughs> Salaki. Luke 4 and 4. And again, I'm not going into anything deep. I'm just, just bringing a few points out. Just bringing out a few points. Luke 4 and 4. Um. <coughs> um, let's go back up. Luke 4 and 3. And the devil said unto him. No, I don't want to start there like that. <coughs> Let's start from the top. <clears throat> the temptation of Yahweh Shai. The Bible says it's about 21. When you come to serve the Lord, expect temptation, right? Right. Now, Luke 4 and 1. Yahweh Shai, being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Okay. Now, uh, verse 2. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, the deceiver, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, and he afterward hungered. Okay, verse 3. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of, God, the son of our power, command the stone that it may be made bread. Now, the devil knew who, exactly who he was. Okay. <laughs> The devil knew exactly who he was, okay? Now, let's continue on. Verse 4. And Yahweh answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of our power. So, wait a minute. 
every word he should not live by bread alone that's because we need to feed our physical bodies you know grits eggs and 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 and, and, and uh beef sausage and turkey sausage and whatnot right okay chicken stew uh uh meatloaf you know uh you know fish right that's that's how we feed our physical body right Lock it for that earbud fill out my ear. So that's how we feel our physical body. But how do we feel our spiritual body? Reading this Torah. Reading, understanding, coming to life by way of the scriptures, right? That's how we feed our spiritual body, our inner man. Okay, our spirit man, right? Now, so now, won't we be reading and studying and meditating those commandments as well? Pursuant to Joshua 1 and 8 when we do that. Will that not occur? I'm reading now. These are commandments. These are not, if I reckon. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me think about it. Let me run that through my grandmama again and talk to my auntie. No. These are commandments. John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandment. Okay, now. Let's continue on. Okay. And uh, also, Luke 4 and 4 is representative where it says, as it is written, that means there is a law. Okay, Yahweh Shai is just, is just repeating it or bringing it to mind. Okay, what is that law? Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Let's go there right quick. Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Okay. Let's get over there. Uh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go up. Since we're in the third verse, we can start at the first verse. And it says, God's gracious dealings. All right, it says, Deuteronomy 8 and 1. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord power swore unto your fathers. Okay. Verse 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy power led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Three, and he humbled thee, children of Israel, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and lest thee and slot for flock and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Okay, that which thou knewest not. Okay, now feeding that, that, that spirit man. Okay. Now neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord power does man live. That's the law for Luke point four. Okay. All right, so we are we we are two in one. We have a fleshly body, which is which is the which is the temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit, because the spirit man is inside the flesh man, and we're only in this body like this because we are upon the earth right now. Okay, we know that in the kingdom, Yahweh Shai will say. Let the, mort the mortal put on immortality and let the corruptible, which is our flesh. Our flesh is corruptible. Okay, we're dying every day. Our flesh is, but our spirit man is being renewed day by day. Okay, so it cannot be destroyed. Okay, <laughs> it cannot be destroyed. It cannot be destructed. Okay, but this body is being, is, is being destroyed every day. Okay, now, so now let's continue on. So I'm going to wrap this up. Now, let's get Galatians 6 and 7 right quick. Then we're going to get Baruch 4 and 1. And then we'll be complete. Lord willing. Galatians 6 and 7. Listen to it. Listen to it. Galatians 6 and 7. Mm -hmm. All right, now. <coughs> Excuse me, it's locking. Now. Galatians 6 and 7. Let's get it. Then I'll slide the top of the screen. 
be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that he should also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, so of the flesh reap corruption. That's your carnal mind, the carnal thinking. Okay, all right. That's everything that we used to do before we were awakened and came to knowledge of the truth. There were many of us that were quote unquote Christian, but we used to hang out in the corner with the, with the trees and the, and the herbs in our mouth. Okay. We didn't see it was no big problem. But then when we came to knowledge of the truth, we began to find out that that is classified as sorcery. Yes, pharma, pharma, pharmakia is the word in the Greek. The root word pharmakos. See? So we came to that knowledge of wisdom and understanding. For some of us, it took a little while. Some of us, it was instant. But we came to repentance on that matter. And we put that away. Okay? Now we're dealing wholly with Yahweh Shemim Shah. Remember, Proverbs 16 and 7 tell, tells us what? When a man's ways please the Lord, he even makes his enemies be at peace with him. Okay? Now, this is not overnight for a lot of people. But every day, every day, bit by bit, as you continue to take that word in, as you continue to be a doer of the word, not a hear only pursuant to James 1.22, as you continue to do these things, guess what's going to happen? The, 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 those, 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 those habits, those hangouts, those people who are not in accordance with you, who do not think the way you think, who do not operate the way you operate, who do not talk the way you talk, they're going to come out of you. You, you, you ain't going to be want to be around it. Yes, trust. Now, <laughs> trust the scriptures. Don't trust me. Trust the scriptures. Now, let's uh, get something else here. Let's continue on because I, I, I broke that scripture. John 10, 35 said the scripture cannot be broken, so let's restate it. Galatians 6 and 8, for he that soweth to his flesh, so of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit, so of the spirit reap life everlasting. Remember, God is the spirit. We must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. And fringes, part of law. Okay. Those fringes, corruption. Why? Because those fringes, the Bible says, but if any of you break the least of these commandments, Let's say you made, let's say you made a garment with fringes on it, right? And you had ribbon of blue on it, right? Let's say, let's say, <laughs> in a certain particular part of it, part of the, 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 the and part of it, part of the document uh, on the back back there, with the two, the two pieces of fabric on the other, you ain't got no ribbon. Are you breaking the law? Yes. Is that serious? Do I want to chance it? See what I mean? I mean, I'll just give you, just, just throwing out a little something, just something, just a mild new example there to you, okay? All right? I mean, that's that. Numbers, also in the book of Numbers, in that same chapter, Numbers 15, Numbers chapter 15, the Bible says the children of Israel were in the wilderness, and they stumbled upon a man that was gathering sticks. It was the Sabbath day. The Bible says, thou shalt not do any servile work on the Sabbath day. He says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, keep my Sabbaths and keep them holy. The word holy means set apart. It also means hallowed. It also means consecrated. You know, do, don't do what, don't do what you normally do on this day. The day is between me and you. That's it. Right? So now, layman term. Now, so anyway, <coughs> um, <coughs> so lucky. Um, so again, for he that soweth to his flesh, so the flesh reap corruption. Let's get the NLT right quick. Oh, this thing may not be. Let's go in NLT. We can we can, we can we can we can probably pull it in there. Listen, see, this is the New International Version (NIV). Okay, Galatians six and seven. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. You get out what you put in. Verse 8, who, so, whoever, it's like it, whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap everlasting life. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So, if you run around here choosing to please your flesh, 
and friends. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because like I say, if you are reading and studying every day, pursuant to 2 Timothy 2.15, you are reading across these laws, commandments, ordinances of Yahweh and Rishai. If you are in, in, in that, that 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed of this gospel. How are you going to not be ashamed of this gospel? You're going to have to read it to find yourself in that position at least. Okay, now, so Revelation 1, three. bless he that readeth. And let, let's get that right quick. Let's get that right quick because that's all. Can you get the way I need you to be? Revelation 1 and 3. And we're going to begin to wrap this up because uh, I just I just want to really pull out these precepts. I didn't want to go into anything deep. And I didn't want them to be 55 minutes long either because it ain't, it ain't that serious. <laughs> to, to be that long, that is. Now, let, uh, Revelation 1 3. And this is still in the NIV, might I add. Blessed is the one who reads about. It's lucky. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. God is a spirit. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. Period. That's that. That's that. That's that. Now, Revelation 1 3, King James Version. Blessed he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keeps those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. James 1 22. Let's get it. Blessed is he that readeth. Hold on. And come up yet, Salaki. Come on, Vaughn. What is going on today? James 1.22. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So how are you going to be a doer of the word? You're going to have to read the word to find out what the word says. Then you're going to have to keep his commandments. So you'll be worshiping him in spirit because all scripture is given by the inspiration of our power, 2 Timothy 3, 16, and in truth, according to the knowledge of the truth. Why? John 17, 17 says what? Sanctify them. Let's get it. Let me get our last precept. John 17, 17. <coughs> John 17, 17. Come on, phone. When is you going to work? When I press go, that means go. <sighs> Goodness. John 17, 17, John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. How are you going to be sanctified through the truth without reading it and doing it? Again, you'll need our friends. God is the spirit. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. We must, notice what it says, God, John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit, we must, not can, not know what to be good, now, oh, I'm, I'm talking to Rev, Rev. Dr. Polchop, no, he says, God is a spirit, we must, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Where's the carnal thinking? Where's the thinking of the flesh? Nowhere to be found, Romans chapter 8. Um, I want to go through that chapter. Reading Romans chapter 8, read the entire chapter, okay? Um, if you need to read it in the King James Version first, as you have seen me do all the time, and then switch to the NLT, it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow you away, okay? With this, simple to most of us, but in regards to this lesson, the Bible says the carnal mind is enmity with the Most High. Let's get on over there. I'm going to go on over there anyway. Um, hopefully we will only plot this precept. Again, I still would like for you to read Romans chapter 8. Uh, read it in the King James Version first. Then, in the Blue Letter Bible, if you have the option, read it in the New Living Translation. It's going to, it, 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 the New Living Translation is going to set you down in a chair and, and tie you to the chair. 
and and you're gonna be in front of that 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 uh uh, uh doctrine. The doctrine gonna be in your face for a good two hours. You be like, oh oh really? Ah ah yeah. That is if you <coughs> the Holy Spirit is operating in you. Yeah, it'll be that way. If not, you won't probably be over there very long. You will be gone. <coughs> now continue on. Um, now, so as we go here, let's go to Romans 8 right quick. Romans 8. Um, in fact, uh, Romans 8, let's get it. Romans chapter 8 says, deliverance from bondage. Okay. That law is bondage. Why? Because people be trying to keep all those laws and you can't keep all those laws. There are 613 laws. Okay. Now, in the kingdom, Hebrews 8 and 10, Hebrews 10, 16, Jeremiah 31 and 33, Yahweh Shai is going to put the laws in our hearts. That would be why, because he says he will, he will remember our sin no more. Well, sin is what? 1 John 3 and 4, Whosoever committed sin also transgresseth the law, for sin is transgression of the law. So if sin is transgression of the law, then in that sense, if, we, if, we, if he says in... He says in those precepts, those three precepts, he was 8 and 10, he was 10, 16, Jeremiah 31, 33. He says that, he says, I will write my commandments. No, he says, I will write my Torah in your mind and in your hearts. And I will write my commandments in your inward parts. So that way, there will, there will be no need, no longer need to go and teach anybody. And says, hey, know that, know that God. Okay, that's what he says. But he also says that he will remember our sin no more. So if he will remember our sin no more, that means he won't remember it, and he's not going to be looking at it. Now, ha, 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 the easiest way to sin, break the law. But the law is going to be in us. So if the law is in us, we, how we can we break it? We're not going to be able to sin. not going to be possible at all, period. I hope you can receive that. Now, let's continue on here so we can get through this and we can and wrap this lesson up. Uh, Deliverance from bondage. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Hamashiach, Yahweh Hamashiach, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Don't worry with the friends. Okay, now. Romans 8 and 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahweh Hamashiach has made me free. From the law of sin and death. Let's read that again. Let's blow it up too. For the law of the spirit. Okay. Due to worshiping in the spirit. We must worship in spirit and truth. For the law of the spirit of life. In the anointed. Yahweh Shah has made me free. From the law of sin and death. Why? Because again. Those friends. Like I said. The Bible says. If you break. And break the least of these commandments. That's a wrap. <laughs> but see, see that bondage that I put on you? And that's happened, that happens to a lot of people right now as they wake up and come to the knowledge of the truth. They just feel like, you know, they're being over-righteous. The Bible tells us not to be over-righteous so much. So <clears throat> they're being over-righteous because they're trying to keep all those laws. They're trying to do all. You ain't going to be able to do it. It's not going to happen, Captain. I mean, for instance, you know, <clears throat> finding a sheep with no spot or no blemish. Hmm. Are you going to the stockyards in your town and look every sheep over and over and over and over some more? Pretty soon, them people going to think you over there trying to do something to the sheep. And, and then you can find yourself way out on the side. See, you're not going to be able to do it. Now, let's continue on. Let's try to throw a few examples in there here and there. Let's <coughs> lock it. Now, let's continue on. Romans 8 and 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. See? For that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. John 4, 24. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay. Romans 8 and 5. But they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. 
You see what I'm saying? So they look at look at that precept. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Oh, I hope you 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 so you eat with so where your friends is at? They that mind the things of the flesh, your friends. They that mind the things of the flesh, friends. They that mind the things of the flesh do mind the hold on. Verse uh, five again. For they that are after the flesh mind the things that are of the flesh. They that are after the flesh, they think about those fleshly thoughts. You know, getting all work, got to get looks up. For something that is okay, it's nothing wrong with drinking strong drink. Proverbs 31 and 6 says, drink strong drink for those of you who have heavy hearts and are ready to perish. So ain't nothing wrong with drinking strong drink. That's, that's, that's a commandment. Drink strong drink. Commandment. You drink strong drink is what it means. Okay, now. Okay, so now, that's a commandment. Now. So, but then, those individuals that are after the flesh, that's all they do is think about the flesh 24-7. They don't never think about the spirit. They don't mind the things of the spirit. Never. Do they read? Do they study? Do they go out and teach on the highways and hedges? The men, that is. Do they prophesy against my say, Ezekiel 35 and 2? Do they show Israel their transgressions according to Isaiah 47? Do they, do, do they teach that everybody can be saved? Although Hebrews 12, 16 and 17 says that I do me cannot be saved. The Bible says he cannot come to repentance. Okay. Psalm 83, those are the enemies of our people. Those people press the Lord, but they also press us. Remember now, Revelation 5, 5, Hebrews 7, 14 tells us that our Lord and Savior is the line of the tribe of Judah. Judah is one of the 12 tribes of Israel, is it not? So that those enemies confounded, those enemies, those enemies, those enemies oppressed him as well as our people, the nation of Israel. So now, okay, is he going to save them people? Hell no. I mean, huh? Come on now. Think about it now. Uh, hello? Okay, let's continue on. And wrap up. Um, Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death. What? Death. What? Death. Let's say it again. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Okay? Galatians 6 and 7. Do not be deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth that, he shall also reap. If he soweth to the flesh, he shall reap that of the flesh. Corruption. And if you're corrupt, you're going to be what? Lake of fire, right here. Okay. In just a few short years. Really? Yeah, really. That's true. Well, I can't say that's true because that's Lord willing. Okay. That's <laughs> Lord willing in a few short years. We only have what? What three major props are left to be fulfilled? Period. That's this, huh? Yeah, so now let's continue on. <clears throat> Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Enmity is hatred. That's what it means, okay? And that carnal mind is our thoughts. That carnal mind is us thinking without the Spirit helping us to understand. That's what it is, okay? Now, <clears throat> I don't know what it is. It's been raining in and out of my area. The humidity in the house is different from the humidity out the house. So, if when I go in and out, in and out, in and out, I, I really get it. Believe me, I do. <coughs> now, um, in fact, what i like to do right quick, let's study the words calmly. Um, I didn't want this lesson to be long at all, but um, I want to try to do justice on all fronts. Okay, uh, the word comes from the Greek. <laughs> G forty five sixty one Sarx Sarx and it means what flesh the meat of an animal uh, uh well your mind your mind your brain is part of that but I mean let's go here um a human being um let's let's get it let's get what we mean here. Use of a natural and physical origin. Um, look at that. Uh, come on, can you slide up? What's going on? Okay, 
Look at the C right here. The sensuous nature of a man, the animal nature, without any suggestion of dep depravity. The animal nature which with cravings which incite to sin. That's your flesh. Okay? And and, and, and what did we read up there early in uh, a few scriptures ago in Romans chapter 8? Uh, um, we are free from the law of sin and death? That ties right in here with, with, with this right here. The animal nature with cravings which incite to sin. Oh, I know one damn thing. I'm a man. And hell, a man got knees. You know, see that girl over there? Hell, I want her. I'm about to get on there. I'm, 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 I'm about to go for what I know. And goddamn, nobody better not try to stop me. Bam. That's right there. That's breaking the law right there. It's a rock 2621. Stumble not at the beautiful woman. Do not desire her for pleasure. <laughs> but that animal nature, okay? That animal nature that you see here spoken of. The animal nature which with cravings which incite to sin. Period. Then next thing you know, you over there. Oh, I'm just going over there to talk. I ain't going to do nothing. Okay. Remember now, I'm demons. The big spirit. <laughs> All right, then. All right. The physical nature of a man uh, as subject to suffering, okay? And all those people right now are trying to keep the law. All those people who are trying to be, all those people who are trying to do it right. Oh, I'm trying to do right. Oh, I've been right all right, man. I've been doing things, I've been doing things right, good way all week. You know, I've been, I've been keeping all the laws and you're in bondage. You're in bondage. Let go and let your house shine. Let go, please. Because it's bondage. Because, like I say, it, because now what you're going to do is you're going to start trying to keep each and every law. There's 613 laws in Torah. Do you know where they all at? So until you read them all and study them all and understand them all, you, <laughs> that's, that's when you can begin to do them all. You're going to run out of time trying to do all that. Just let go and let you have a shot. No. All right. Um, now, you get the just what's being said in the precept, um, whatnot. So, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to end it off right there. I uh, didn't want to go as long as it was. So, Romans chapter 8 is deliverance from bondage. It is entitled, um, if you need to, catch in the New Living Translation as well. All you're going to do here, you see up at the top of your screen, I click there at that thing that says KJV, and I bring up the New Living Translation, which is the third one down on the NIV. It's going to be more and more and more simplified in a way that you can understand. Okay, I hope this lesson has been edifying. If it has come to the honor, glory, and power of Yahweh, but Shabbat 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 Double honor to the elders and possible great millstone who will well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom.